Today's lesson is Plus Talk, acing an interview. Hi, everybody. My name is Roger. And I'm Mike. And today we're going to be talking about an interview that you might have with a company that might want to hire you. We've got, of course, an example conversation here between David and Jess. And indeed, of course, lots of our beloved students are young in high school and junior high. And of course, eventually you're going to want to seek a nice career. And of course, in order to get a job at a company, you're going to have to have an interview. So hopefully our lesson today will help you do well in your interview and you might even ace your interview. That would be wonderful. We all would love to ace an interview. When you ace something, you're basically doing really well. You're getting a good score. You're having no problem. You're having great success. This is a word we often use when talking about interviews, but also tests. If you say, I aced my test at school today, you're expecting to get 199, whatever, a very good mark. You did well. You got all the answers. It might have even felt easy to you if you aced something. So if you want to have the smoothest, most successful interview, well, let's check out our dialogues. Acing an interview. One, building rapport. Jess is waiting in the reception area for the interviewer to arrive. Hi, you must be Jess. I'm David, the hiring manager. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you too. I'm really looking forward to discussing the position with you. That's great to hear. The interview will be held in one of our conference rooms. Please follow me. The two walk through the office to the conference room. I must say the office is really lovely. There's so much natural light. Yes, it's nice, isn't it? Actually, we just relocated to this building a couple of months ago. We got really lucky finding this place. You made a good choice. It looks like a great space to work in. 大家好。标题中我们看到动词ace表示在挑战或是考试中表现良好。像是 Dirk was sure he had aced his driving test. Dirk 确定他在路考中表现良好。或是 Dana aced every subject this semester. Dana这学期每个科目都考得很好。另外, ace当形容词用也有顶尖的或是一流的意思。the ACE architect was selected to design several important buildings in the city. Tom is an ACE chess player who has beaten everyone else in our school. Tom is Okay, so again, we've got some conversations here all about acing an interview. And we start with part one. We're building rapport. Rapport, of course, is kind of a mutual feeling you have with other people. You understand each other. You have a harmonious relationship. So again, if you go into an interview, you want to relate to the interviewer. You want to get along well, and you want to understand each other. So you need to build that rapport. That's right. When you're talking about the things that you have in common with your friends, the, the way that you laugh at the same jokes or you have the same hobbies or something, that's kind of like rapport. It's like a good relationship. We know each other well. You know, we communicate well, get along well, that kind of thing. Creating those connections between people. So here we're building rapport. We're trying to break the ice and make a good first impression, that kind of thing. Let's find out more. It says Jess is waiting in the reception area for the interviewer to arrive. Okay, so a very good traditional standard beginning of a job interview. Jess, this is probably the candidate, the person who's trying to get the job. She's there at the company's office. She's waiting in the reception area for the interviewer. That's the person who will interview her, the person at the company who's looking to hire new workers. And uh, since Jess is new to this whole company, she's just waiting in the reception area. This is sort of the lobby, the area you would walk into when you first walk through the doors off the street 
elevator coming out of the elevator you open the office doors it might have the name on them and that first area is the reception area and there might be a person sitting there behind a desk with lots of phones and they'll look up and say hi can I help you that is the receptionist that person's job is to welcome visitors to the company that waiting area the reception area and into the reception area very quickly walks David he is the interviewer then he greets Jess he says hi you must be Jess he's expecting Jess there so he says I'm David the hiring manager it's a pleasure to meet you or I'm pleased to meet you or you could just say pleased to meet you that's fine as well that's right and Jess responds in kind by just basically repeating that back pleased to meet you too he might have said it's nice to meet you nice to meet you too a pleasure to meet you a pleasure to meet you too so that's easy you just mirror back what the person said add two to the end and of course you are responding in kind and then Jess goes on to say I'm really looking forward to discussing the position with you so she's showing her enthusiasm for the job she's trying to look calm and cool she's not looking nervous Nervous, and she's also sort of expressing interest and excitement about this new job. So this is good news. And then I think David is, uh, he's happy to hear that. He's happy to see her good attitude. Exactly. So yes, uh, interviewers, of course, like people who are proactive and who come up with their own things to say. So indeed, she's doing quite well here by saying that she's looking forward to the interview. She's looking forward to discussing the position that is available. And David said, well, that's great to hear. The interview will be held in one of our conference rooms. Please follow me. So, of course, they're not going to hold the interview in the reception area. They're going to go someplace private so they can have a conversation. And in this particular case, it's going to be held in one of their conference rooms. Indeed, if you're being interviewed for a job, maybe it can be quite embarrassing if other people can hear what you're saying. So it's very nice if these interviews are held in private. Absolutely. And so it says the two walk through the office to the conference room. Yeah, the conference room. That's where you have conferences, another word for meetings. So this isn't in David's office. This will be in another location, probably a bigger location. You imagine that big table, maybe 10, 20 chairs sitting around the table. This is where they have meetings or conferences. Of course, these days people might have conferences from their office because they're doing it through Zoom or doing it online. But if you're doing it in person and you have more than one or two people, the conference room is a good location for that. So that's where they're having the interview as as well they're walking through to the conference room Jess she walks into the conference room and continuing this good job she's doing of sort of being engaged and you know showing her personality and showing that she's confident in herself she looks around and she says hmm, I must say the office is really lovely so she's so relaxed she's commenting on the decoration of the office what a confident self-assured young person and then she says there's so much natural light so yeah yeah, she's noticing that ooh, the windows are big you get light in here look at all those healthy plants in the corner that kind of thing but this is just showing how relaxed she is in a situation that would be quite stressful for many people indeed if you're being interviewed for a job of course you're probably going to be very nervous and it's going to be very awkward for you to say things like this but if you're able to be relaxed and express yourself freely you can say something about the office hey this is a really nice office i'd like to compliment you you on having a nice office like this and David agrees he says yes it's nice isn't it it is a nice office actually we just relocated to this building a couple of months ago we got really lucky finding this place so of course companies relocate to different locations for various reasons maybe the old building they were in was old and it had roaches and rats and things like that or they were going to tear it down or something so they had to find a new office somewhere else so they relocated to that building just a few months ago and it actually turned out to be a really nice building they probably got a reasonable rate for the rent for the office space and of course it's got lots of natural light Absolutely. And Jess is 
interested in hearing what David just told her, and he's happy to know that she's interested in the workspace and the office. And Jess is sort of showing her approval now or her agreement that this was a good place to work. This is a good place to move to. It's a nice place to work. She says, you made a good choice. It looks like a great space to work in. So really, the actual subject of this conversation isn't as important as it's Jess building rapport. She's building a relationship outside of the traditional job interview relationship. She's not just telling him her information about where she went to school and stuff. She's kind of, you know, making a friendship here, making a relationship or building rapport. So far, so good. But now it's down to the actual interview. So I think it's time for part two. Two, providing thoughtful answers. The two sit down and David begins the interview process. So, why are you interested in the internship position at Architect? Well, I'd love to intern at Architect primarily because I'm really impressed by how innovative your company is. I think your smart technology will define the future of the industry. Excellent! And what skills and experience do you hope to gain from the position? I hope to build on the skills I have developed at university by applying them to real-world situations. I'm quite familiar with contemporary marketing strategies by now, but I haven't had the chance to put them into practice. I'm happy to hear that. You'll certainly get that opportunity here. Liju, Kim looked thoughtful as she concentrated on how to improve her essay. Kim 看起来若有所思, 因为她专心在想如何改善她的论文. 或是, thoughtful people know when to put the needs of others before their own. 体贴的人知道何时该把他人的需求 看得比自己重要. 另外补充这个字的同一形容词, considerate, C-O-N-S-I-D-E-R-A-T-E, considerate. 只体贴的或是考虑周到的。像是 Eric's mom hopes he can be more considerate of others. Eric的妈妈希望他可以多体贴别人一点。或者 It was very considerate of Echo to visit me in the hospital. Echo真的很贴心,他到医院来探望我。接着我们看到单字 internship. 这个字是名词,指实习职务或是实习期。举例来说, During my internship, I worked long hours. 在我的实习期间,我的工作时数很长。或是, After one year of internship, Howard successfully became a full-time employee in the company. 在一年的实习结束后, Howard成功变成了这间公司的全职员工。另外补充一个相关名词, Intern, I-N-T-E-R-N, Intern, 指实习生。像是, our company uses interns instead of part-timers because they work for free. 我们公司聘用实习生而不是工读生,因为他们免费工作。或是, Marla decided to take a position as an intern in the hopes that it would lead to a permanent role at the company. Marla决定接受实习生的身份,以期望可以成为公司正式员工。Okay, so part two in today's lesson is another conversation between David and Jess. Remember, David is the interviewer and Jess is the interviewee. And they're providing thoughtful answers to each other, or at least Jess is providing thoughtful answers because I believe David has most of the questions because, after all, this is a job interview. So the two sit down in the conference room, and David begins the interview process. So, of course, if you're conducting an interview, you do need to have a plan and you need to follow a plan for the interview, and you need to follow the interview process. So David begins with a question. So, why are you interested in the internship position at Architect? Yeah, why are you interested in this job, and why do you want to work for us? 
That's right. And this seems to be an internship position, which is interesting because an internship is sort of like a job, but it might be a job that someone who is still in school will take. Maybe for a short period of time, the pay might be a little different, probably lower, and you'll kind of be a junior worker in that company. It can be a great thing if you're still studying because maybe in the summertime, if you're studying in business, for example, in the summertime, you might get a job in some big company and it's not a full-time job. You're not expected to be there for long, maybe just a few months, and you're going to be working with some of the senior people in the company, learning on the job, hands-on training, as we might say. So this is a job, but kind of a beginner or a starter job at this company, Architect. So why do you want this position? Why should we hire you? In other words, is what David is asking her. So it's time for one of Jess's thoughtful answers, one of her well-considered, you know, an answer that she's really given some time to preparing and also she'll hope to impress with this good answer and with the care that she answers the question with. Well, she says, well, I'd love to intern at Architect primarily because I'm really impressed by how innovative your company is. So there you go. In a very good, well-constructed sentence, she explains very clearly why she's interested in this job in the internship or being an intern. That would be her title if she got this position, primarily, mainly because she's impressed by how innovative the company is. If a company is innovative, they're on the cutting edge. They're doing the latest, newest, most most creative things. They're not kind of the same business that's been doing it for 40 years since my grandfather opened the company. We haven't changed at all. That is not innovative. And David is impressed. The job interviewer says, excellent. Okay. He really liked that answer. He thought it gave him a good answer. And it also showed how thoughtful she was, how well prepared she is for this. She's not just saying, I don't know, because it's cool, or I don't know, I need some money, or something like that. No, she's really thought about it. She's put some time into researching and thinking about what she wants in the future. So he asks another good open-ended question, and what skills and experience do you hope to gain from the position? I say it's an open-ended question because it's not just a yes, no. She doesn't just answer with one word. She can kind of answer in any way she wants. So this is a good thing for Jess if you're prepared, but it can also be difficult if you're not prepared because you really don't know what to say after you answer in a very basic way. So what skills and experience do you hope to gain from the position? In other words, what do you hope to get out of working here, apart from, of course, just a paycheck or something like that? Indeed, yes. They say that the worst answer is just to say you just want to make money. Mm -hmm. Of course, you want to learn more. And, of course, you want to gain experience and uh, learn some skills. So David, of course, is asking her specifically what experience and skills she hopes to gain by working in this company and having that position as an intern. And Jess says, well, I hope to build on the skills I have developed at university by applying them to real world situations. This is a situation that a lot of people may find themselves in. They studied in university and maybe they got some experience in the classroom with certain projects and stuff like that. But uh, that's not real world experience. That's just hypothetical experience in a university setting. So you've got that basic knowledge, but you need to build on it. You need to improve that experience by working in a real world company. And she needs to apply those skills to real world situations so that she can learn even more and be even more effective. Fantastic answer. All right. And then she says, I'm quite familiar with contemporary marketing strategies by now, but I haven't had the chance to put them into practice. So yeah, it does sound like she's a student. She's learned a lot in the classroom is basically what she's saying with the first part of that answer or that sentence. I'm quite familiar. I know quite a lot and I'm used to, I've studied a contemporary marketing strategies by now. So up until this point of her education, she's learned a lot about contemporary marketing strategies. A strategy, of course, is a plan, a way of doing something, a way of accomplishing or reaching a goal. In this case, your goal is better marketing Marketing. marketing is selling stuff to people, kind of like advertising or something like that. And the way that companies market or advertise these days has changed a lot, especially over the past 10 or 20 years. And if you want to do something that's up to date, that's modern, that's the way that people are doing it now, you want to do it in a contemporary 
kind of way. That means from the time that we're living in now, not 10 year old, not from history, not from the past, but up to date. So this would be kind of things like using the web, using social media, using Instagram to promote your brand and things like that. So she studied a lot of this in school, but she says in the second part of the sentence, I haven't had the chance to put them into practice. Basically, I've learned a lot about these things. I've learned about the ideas, but I've never actually used the ideas. When you put something into practice, you put it to use in the real world. It's not just book learning, it's real life experience. Right. And of course, it's going to be experience at a real company that wants to make money. So David says, I'm happy to hear that. You'll certainly get that opportunity here. Indeed, it is a real company and they're trying to make money and they don't want to fail and lose clients and things like that. So indeed, it will be her chance to put her skills into practice. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. It's time now to listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello,同学,大家好,我是Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。在第二部分对话里面,招募经理David问Jess,希望从这个职位获得什么样的技能和经验。那么Jess就回答,I hope to build on the skills I have developed at university by applying them to real-world situations. 我希望借由实际应用我在大学培养的技能来磨练自己。好,这边他用到 build on, 也可以用 build upon, 去加上名词, 是表达以什么什么为基础。那这是表达说以过去的成果为基础, 然后继续加以延伸啊,发展。而它的受词呢, 就是所根据的基础了。好,另外课文呢,有用到 apply A to B的句型 我们就来整理一下 apply的相关用法 apply它可以当及物或是不及物用 我们现在先来看看及物用法 那第一种呢,我们可以用apply表达运用,应用的意思 apply A to B就是把A应用在B上面 那这就是课文的用法咯 好,那第二个呢,我们可以用apply去表达涂抹,敷,或者是把什么铺在表面 apply A to B就表示把A涂啊抹啊或者用在B上面 举例来说,she applied some sunscreen to her face 她在脸上抹一些防晒乳 那这边也补充还有一个用法叫做 apply oneself 这是表达说某人他勤奋努力做某事他致力于做某事努力来成功完成某事的那种意思那我们后面可以接to加上名词或动名词举例来说 Lisa applies herself to learning Japanese Lisa她努力学习日语 好,那么接着来看 apply的不及物用法 第一种呢,我们可以用apply表达使什么起作用,使什么适用 Apply to somebody or something 就可以表达适用于某人或某事物 举例来说, the rules apply to everyone in this company 就是说这些规则适用全公司的人 那第二个我们可以用apply去表达申请啊,请求的意思 尤其是指透过书面形式来正式申请请求 我们常常用apply for加名词表示 那么for的后面呢 这个名词可以是某个职位啊,会员资格等等 像apply for a job, apply for membership apply for college等等 如果是apply to加名词 则是表达向某个机关单位等等去申请应征 那其实这时候我们就可以组合这两个部分 你用apply to单位机构 for加名词 就可以表达向某个单位机构来申请某事物 举例来说 They applied to the bank for a loan 他们向银行申请贷款 那还有一个用法是 apply to 加原形动词 像某个组织他可能要招募志工团队 也许就会可能在网站写说 Anyone can apply to become a volunteer 任何人都可以申请成为志工 好,那么以上是今天重点整理,我们回顾今天单字吧 Reception You can leave your bags in the reception area while you wait to check in Conference the manager scheduled a conference to discuss plans for expansion. Thoughtful. 
Olivia wrote a thoughtful essay about the tension between the countries. Innovative. James Joyce was one of the most innovative writers of the 20th century. Contemporary. Should we use traditional music or go with something more contemporary? Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program, and please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Mike. I am Roger. See, See you next time. time.